Hey guys, what's up? This is the third video in the 50 Rust projects playlist series. So this is so each video is is a different project, right? Each video is a project in itself. So this third video is a, is a project, and in this we will be working with uh, CSV, a CSV file. So we'll use Rust to uh, read from a CSV file. Now this project is already there on GitHub. So this code is already there on GitHub. Uh, I'm Akhil Sharma 90 on GitHub. In case you don't know that, you have to follow me because it, that's how you'll get access to all of these projects for free. They, you know, they're all free projects, right? Like it's for, you can always go and copy stuff from here. Feel free to start, start it in case you, you copy it, feel free to start it, right? Or if you want to like find it easily, again, you can start it. Anyhow, so this project is already on GitHub. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Now there are some links that I have out here opened up so that um, I will take you through these pages also. So because what we are going to write, the code we're going to write, some people they do get confused with that uh, type of a code, type type of code. So that's why I have these uh, tabs open for you guys. I'll take you through them. Uh, but before that, I want to tell you that this the program is going to be very, very small, right? It's, there's nothing there. And uh, I will put comments before I upload the uh, like like I've, I've already put con comments I think if not if I've not I'll put comments in the project uh, in github so that you'll always remember why you typed uh, what part of the code then there's also a customers.csv file and I've uploaded this file also I think to github uh, and so that you don't have to worry about getting your own csv file and then uh, trying to run this program so this csv file I think I got from a website called csvdemo.com something like that it gives you a lot of demo csvs with that you can download Okay, so this CSV file is here in the root folder itself, at the root level of this folder. Um, now, when I run this, so let me try, let me show you how to uh, how it works. So if I run this, right, I will just have to say cargo run, and it will basically print out all of the content from a CSV file. Uh, now, working with CSV files is a very important uh, skill for any developer. So all the projects that I'm doing, right, the, the way I've started them, the, the uh, order in which I've started them, like we did compression, decompression, and now we're doing CSV. And probably we'll do working with files and all of that. Uh, so all of these things that we are doing are very important to skills to learn as a, as a developer, because uh, let's say you get a job uh, in a company that uses Rust. Now they're building a feature where you have to, uh, you know, where the user can upload a CSV file and then you can uh, download, like, you know, extract all of the data and then store it in a database in JSON. Just an example, right? This is a very common use case, like about 80, 70 to 80% of, of all the big products out there, they all have CSV importing functionality, right? You have any type of project management tooling, type of CRM or ERP, all of them have CSV importing uh, tools of their own. Uh, they can't just li rely on libraries because they have to do a lot of custom jobs in there. That's why you need skills to be working to work with CSV files. Okay, so having said a lot, like I've told you a lot about the applications, I always try to tell you about the application so that you know what you're building, right? And where you're going to use it. So uh, as you know about me, I'm more of a developer and an engineer rather than an instructor, right? I'm not just I'm, like I'm not a teacher or an instructor. I'm, I'm a developer, right? Uh, and and I'm, I, I have my own companies. So I only teach you stuff that you are going to use. Like I, we build scrapers together, we build, you know, all those things together. So all things that you will need in your life for sure. So I've showed you all of that now. Now is the time to start building our project. So I usually keep my code in this pro folder called Rust stuff, which is everything to do with Rust. So here I'll say cargo new, and the name will be CSV. YT, right? So YT is the folder. Uh, YT is the uh, the you know uh, extension that I give it so that I remember that this project was for YouTube and that I built with you guys. Okay. So I have pressed enter, I believe. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's created the file. So I'll just cd into it. I'll say cd csv yt and let's see what happens. Okay. So here I get my cargo.toml file and my src folder, and now I can go ahead and open it up in the uh, VS code. So essentially what I'll do now is I will copy uh, the file 
the CSV file, I mean, and keep, and keep it here. You can also get the CSV file from the GitHub code, okay? And I'll just get rid of this for now. So uh, I want to use the CSV crate and the CSV crate needs to be brought here. So we'll say CSV is equal to 1.1. Okay. So um, apart from CSV, I need to work with errors. So I'll use standard error and error. All right. Now there will be two functions here. One will be these, the good old main function, so func main. And here we will say, uh, we'll just basically call the main, the, the real main function in the sense the, the function where we'll do all the, uh, all the processing, it's going to be called read from file. That's what our function is going to be called. And uh, is we're going to pass this path, which is basically the path of the root file where the customers.csv file, uh, root folder where the customers.csv file is there. And we'll use ePrint ln. Now, I, I use <laughs> ePrint ln a lot in my, so I, I take these boot camps also, right? Sometimes just offline boot camps and stuff like that. So uh, whenever I write ePrint print ln, people somehow don't know what this is. It's a very common thing. So this is, I have this document open for you. You can feel free to uh, read it if you want. Just just look for ePrintLN. So it's not the same as println. This is for printing out uh, errors, more specifically, right? Errors and progress messages. So many people, they, they miss the E and then they think that println is the same, so they get errors. So I'm just letting you know that println and eprintln are two different things. This is specifically for printing out errors. Now, I mean, you won't get an error, but you might get a warning or an, and it might not work in the right way uh, when you output stuff. So just letting you know, you have to use eprintln. And there needs to always be an exclamation mark here. So many people miss that out also. And println and, and the println with exclamation mark are two different things. All right, so coming to the function where the whole magic is going to happen, which is read from file. It basically takes in the path, the path which we have sent here, right? So now there's also something that I'm using here where basically in Rust, we don't have exceptions, right? So we use result when working with errors and then we can also box the underlying dynamic errors now this is also something that many people have uh, trouble understanding so i think i have the documentation for all of this opened up here somewhere let me show you yeah so where was it okay yeah um yeah so rush doesn't have exceptions it has panics but you don't want to use that you want uh, you know error handling is discouraged uh, with with panics so you use results like this with errors right and dynamic errors more specifically the one that we are using to handle real time and underlying errors all of those things so i've just kept those tabs open just to show you guys you know uh, in case you have like no idea about trust and you're still building this project with me which is not recommended that's why i'm opening up the basics of rust uh, on different tabs and showing you that you know you don't uh, so that at least some something you take away from this video okay and then you have a mutable reader which is which, which is which is something that we'll get from our csv great and here you pass in the path you pass in the path that you've just received right the path of this file now uh, Having a mutable reader variable will help us to go over this because we want to go over this complete CSV file, right? We want to loop over it. So that's why we need it to be mutable. Uh, and now we'll run that for loop here. We'll build that for loop. That's that's why we need uh, it to be mutable. And the, the um, what do you call it? So this, this question mark, right? This question mark is something that we'll be using. Uh, in, in case you're not at all used to the Rust uh, syntax, this is something that we'll be using in a while. Now I'll, I'll explain it to you. Um, so instead of having 
uh, like using the match in, in many of my projects in, in case uh, you've seen other projects of rust uh, you might see me using match right so instead of using match which is a little more verbose you have these different cases where you can match and you know, do something for success do something for in case of error you can just uh, put a question mark that's just little more uh, is just little less verbose that's that's what you get with the question mark so uh, now this is like a like the very very basic basics of rust so i will look for the right uh oh place like i'll try to like look for the right place where question marks uh, you know what i'm saying has been explained properly i think is this it uh, no I'll, tr I'll try and look for it by the way i'll try and find it for you guys anyhow so uh, this is why i use this question mark okay don't get um, don't get phased, don't get stressed when you see something like this in Rust syntax. It's a very, very common thing that you'll be seeing in like most of the programs. So I'm assuming that probably one, my programs are probably the first time you're using Rust. So I'm assuming that and that's why I'm taking you through the, like, the very basics also. I'm, uh, you know, I'm pointing out these kind of things. And then when you go through, this is how you run a for loop in Rust. You go through uh, the reader and each result you will handle in a variable called record and then you will print out each record then you'll say okay in, in the case of success so use okay for success and this is it this is the whole program actually it's very very simple very very straightforward so we have a main function which which is where the program will enter from and you will call this function called read from file if there's an error you'll print out the error out here but uh, mostly this file has been passed here which has been taken as a path and it's a reference to a string uh, we'll work with uh, result and we'll work with boxed boxed errors we'll create a mutable reader uh, with the help of csv reader which will use this path which we've received in this function and then you'll go over that uh, in a for loop you'll go over every single record in the csv file and you will capture that in record and then you'll just print it that's it okay and then you'll say okay if everything went well now we can actually go ahead and we can just run it so we'll say cargo let's see so it's saying end of input for my cargo dot toml that's correct because forgot to close this off the crate section so now it will get all these crates for me it'll build the project blah 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 it'll take a while take a few minutes not not minutes sorry a few seconds but now also there's some issue it's saying read from file customers or csv with a similar name exists read from file so obviously there's some some issue with the name of the function that i've uh, yeah so it's read from file not read from phi um so all of this stuff happens i'm not going to edit any of this out because i want you to know what happens when you actually build stuff okay so a tuple variant with a similar name exists so the o needs to be capital is what rust is saying so uh now now the the reason is the reason that i'm so cool with a language like rust or golang you know whenever you see me coding and i and i make all these i make hundreds of mistakes right and i'm the reason i'm so cool is, is because the compilers are so uh like they're so nice. I mean, they'll tell you exactly <laughs> where the issue is and, and why uh, the issue is there. So I don't like, you know, I don't spend too much time in getting the code perfect, right? That was, that, that's, so two that's so 2015, right? Getting the code perfect. Now it's 2022, you don't, like the coding languages that we use, Golang, Trust, they're so advanced. Compilers are so advanced. They'll tell you exactly what's the issue and where is it. So you don't really, you don't have to be a genius to code now, right? be a complete dumb ass like me <laughs> and still get your work done uh, and now it'll work perfectly so 
that's like like my whole whole main agenda is to get you coding, get you guys coding. That's why I showed you projects rather than just explaining concepts to you. Like start using it, and and many people they they feel so scared, right? Building things on their own, uh, they just keep reading and learning uh, the basics, but they never actually end up building stuff on their own. And the reason is that they're scared is because they're scared of these errors and the issues that you get. But I just want to show you that uh, everybody gets those issues and errors, and it's very easy to fix them. So don't have to be scared at all. All right, so this was it, guys. It's a very simple program. This was it. And I will now leave it for you on GitHub. You can get it from there. And in the next project, we'll build something interesting again like, like today. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.